Take therefore the talent from him, give it to him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that shall and he shall have an abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. It's not good, is it, what happens to this wicked and slothful servant. He not only loses the talent that he had of the masters, he loses his position that he has because he's cast out, notice in verse 30, into outer darkness. And notice how he's described there in verse 30 as an unprofitable servant. He's not profitable to the master, so the master dispenses with him. Get him out of here. Put him in outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the place of torment. It's outside of the presence of the master. And you think that you're going to stay in the presence of the master. No. And the one who had ten is given an extra. What belonged to the one. That now becomes his. So there's an extra blessing for those who are faithful. For those who do the job well. But for those who despise what the master provides. Each of us looks into the mirror of God's word and we see different pictures. We see different images that are reflected back. I want to see myself in the guy with the five who makes five more and glorifies his master, but I know I, my abilities don't range that far. I want to see myself in the, the servant who has two, who makes other two. And his Lord says, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. I want to see myself in him, but I know my abilities aren't that deep. And so I come down to the guy with one, and I, I cry out to God, let not that be me. I, my abilities are weak. My abilities are shallow. So often I find myself beyond my depth. And I know that you don't give me more than I can handle. And I, I find myself squandering my time and I find myself squandering my money on me and I find myself squandering my abilities on other things and I find myself distracted by the world and I find myself involved in sin and I find myself doing things that I know do not honor and glorify my master. And I look at that man with one talent and I say, Oh God, let not that be me. I like my shovel real good. And I pray that he, the, the shallow, limited ability of this man would be enough to glorify God. What would happen, do you think, if the man with one had gone and traded the one? What would happen, do you think, when he walked into his master's presence and said, instead of accusing the master, saying, I knew you were a hard man? If he said, Lord, you gave me one talent. Here's one talent more. Behold, here's one talent more. What a rejoicing there would be. And it wouldn't matter before the presence of the master that this one had two and this one had four and this one had ten the master would have rejoiced with them and he would have said the same thing to the one with two now. He would have said, enter into the joy of your Lord. You've been faithful over a little, I'll make you ruler over much. I think that's where I am. I think maybe that's where most of us are. We're holding on to the one, to the half, to the quarter, to the eighth. Because maybe that's all we've got. And the master's given us just enough to glorify him with. And it might not be but a little. But we can do it. We can do it. I pray today that your prayer will be as my prayer. Lord, let that not be me. But let me change the outcome of this parable. Well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.